Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us once again. In this segment, I have a conversation with Mr. Jack Talley. He's the CEO of Squarex. He's um, joining us on the program to talk about some very positive results of the phase two study on their new investigational drug. It's um, a topical treatment for, for herpes. Uh, welcome to Health Professional Radio. Jack, how are you? Uh, I'm fine, Neil. Uh, nice to be with you. Now, you are the new CEO of SquareX. Uh, give us a bit of background and um, talk about your role there at SquareX briefly. Sure. I uh, I joined SquareX uh, a little while ago, but uh, I've been in the pharmaceutical industry um, for over 30 years, uh, mm-hmm. developing new prescription drugs uh, for a, a wide variety of diseases. And uh, what attracted me to uh, SquareX was that they had a new novel topical immunosensitizer uh, for the prescription treatment of cold sores. And uh, specifically, um, this is the first and the only drug that actually prevents outbreaks of cold sores. And I thought that was uh, something interesting, novel, and uh, frankly, unprecedented. We all are familiar, you know, with with cold sores. We've seen the commercials. Some of us uh, suffer from them periodically. It seems that we've all been told that this something once you have it, it's just one of those things and you have to treat it for the, you know, the three to seven days or however long it takes for your particular outbreak to to dissipate. Now, you're talking about something that actually prevents outbreaks. Yes, that is uh, that is absolutely correct. Unfortunately, uh, according to the National Center for Health Statistics, roughly half of us are walking around with the HSV-1 virus in our body. Um, how we cont- uh, contracted it or when it happened, um, most of us don't know. And uh, the bottom line is for most of us, it stays dormant, and we don't even know that we have the HSV-1 uh, virus. Um, a portion of the population will get an outbreak of cold sores, or HSV-1, and um, what uh, it usually manifests itself by an open, erupted sore uh, in the area of the mouth, and it's uh, preceded by tingling, so uh, patients know uh, that it's coming, and then you get a frank outbreak. Um, uh, the common misconception is that you're only infectious when that outbreak manifests itself. And in fact, you're infectious from the whole period of the tingling beginning to when the uh, eruption is fully healed. Um, what we're focused on is lengthening the time between those outbreaks, because while half of us carry the virus, um, about um, uh, five to six million people will have six or more outbreaks per year. And for those people, they need to see a physician to try to treat the symptoms of the outbreak. And you can. uh, It's roughly a $300 million market. Uh, You can get treatment with some uh, over-the-counter remedies, or you can get treatment with some um, uh, antiviral remedies. And they do lessen the duration of the outbreak for many of these patients. Um, Fortunately, though, they don't prevent the next outbreak. And that's what SquareX is focused on. Now, this HSV-1 virus, um, how is it different from uh, other viruses of the same uh, class? So it, there's many herpetic viruses um, and I, uh, that are out there. Some uh, are responsible um, for um, shingles. Some are responsible for genital herpes. HSV-1 is the variant that we focus on, and that is intended, uh, that is the cause of cold sore outbreaks. Um, It's not uncommon for people to have an uh, HSV-1 virus to also be a carrier of the HSV-2, but we're focused on HSV-1. 
how does this topical work against HSV-1, whereas other topicals have not worked or were limited in their, uh, in their effectiveness? So we work by changing gene expression. And we've done a genetic analysis of patients that uh, have the HSV-1 virus and also have frequent outbreaks. And what we've found um, in those patients is that um, they get, um, they have decreased immune cell proliferation and they have um, a a different genetic profile uh, that causes the severity of these outbreaks. What we do is we augment that genetic profile after a single dose to let them, to let their own body protect against future outbreaks. And what about um, being contagious, whether there's an outbreak or not? Oh, they're still contagious during that period of time. We can't, uh, we can't cure that. But what we can do is lessen the severity of an outbreak and increase the time between outbreaks. Uh, but they still will carry the virus. Were all of them, did all of them have the same average number of outbreaks during the study? Uh, or were they picked out because they had a specific number of outbreaks per year? What about age and things of that nature? How, did, how were they uh, deemed the best candidates for the, the phase two? Sure. So what we did in the phase two study is we asked patients to report what were the average number of outbreaks they had in the last calendar year. And one of the inclusion criteria was that you had to have four or more outbreaks. And we did not tell the patients that that was how we were screening. Um, uh, That was a primary determinant of whether or not you'd be eligible to enter the study. Once you uh, were eligible to enter the study, you were randomized to either treatment with our drug, uh, which is a a topical uh, squaric acid dibutyl ester, or you were randomized to placebo. And you were given a single dose, um, applied to the upper arm and uh, the inner upper arm. And uh, then um, you basically leave it on for a short period of time. You put a bandage over it. Um, and then we counted the number of outbreaks in a calendar year for those patients prospectively, as well as the severity and the time for the next outbreak as well. And what we found is that we were able to, yet again, and this is the third time that we've done this, actually uh, decrease the severity of outbreaks and increase the time between outbreaks. Was there an average uh, span, like, say, 100 days, 70 days? Sure. We basically, um, in the um, placebo patients, what we typically saw uh, was that the time to next outbreak was a, approximately um, 40 days, um, and that what we saw in the um, um, treated patients is that it, it that increased to approximately 120 days. So it was a very significant uh, change um, in these patients. For many of them, an unprecedented uh, improvement in their disease. What is the treatment called and where can we go online and get some more information about the uh, the treatment? Sure. You can go online to clinicaltrials.gov and uh, hear about the uh, studies, uh, read about the studies that, are, uh, that have been done. Uh, we, in fact, are the only company that's doing studies in um, prevention of cold sore outbreaks. And uh, we do have... Uh, publication. Uh, the first two publications are uh, the phase one study was published in JAMA, um, and then the genetic profile um, study um, has also um, been, uh, been published as well. 
Jack, I thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. we been quite informative, and I'm sure we'll speak again. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. You've been listening to thank Health you. Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of the program are available at hpr.fm, healthprofessionalradio.com.au, and you can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.